esposo murió en combate. Amber Hill, a working mother, cannot imagine the unexpected turn her life will take when some army officers give her the terrible news that no woman would want to hear that her husband Darren loses his life while on patrol in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the war in Afghanistan. No, no. That your husband was killed in combat? Disconsolate and full of pain, she falls to the ground. All the questions go through her head quickly, since she couldn't help but think how hard her life would be without him, and now she must face life, together with Bree, her ten-year-old daughter, who will soon suffer all the pain that the absence of his father entails. Two years later, Amber has stopped attending church because she feels that her faith is not the same since the tragic day, however she does not forbid Bree to go to participate in church activities. Yeah. Dropping Brie off at church one day to participate in the Sunday service, she exchanges glances with Cody Jackson, a race car driver from the city, who is also attending church that day, seeing her and falling in love with Amber at first sight. Amber's life is no longer the same, now she has had to work as a waitress in a cafeteria in the city where she is poorly paid, and barely has enough to live on, despite the differences that exist between her and her late husband's mother, Patty comes to the cafeteria to offer her a sales position where she can earn more money and have more time to dedicate to her daughter, but Amber immediately rejects the proposal since she does not want to be helped by anyone. To make you an offer. The days go by normally, so Brie attends school as usual. That day is very special for her since the teacher teaches her about faith in God. She explains to the students that faith is like a mustard seed, very small but it can grow into a giant tree. This is very interesting to the girl who, together with her teacher and the other children, make a pot with a mustard seed for each one of them. Upon arriving at the house, Brie very enthusiastically explains to her mother the master class on faith that the mustard seed represents, but her mother does not pay much attention to her since she is extremely worried about economic problems due to a notification from the bank of the foreclosure of the house, which for a long time was her home, where she shared the best moments of her life with her husband and her little daughter. Meanwhile, Cody in the workshop of his friend Joe, participates in the construction of carts for the children of the church, when suddenly he receives a visit from Brie accompanied by her grandmother Patty along with other children from the church. Cody jumps at the chance to hear Patty say the address where Amber works. Out on old 37? Yeah. So in his eagerness to meet her, after finishing her work he goes to the cafeteria to start a conversation and invite her out, but for now she is focused on her problems and rejects the invitation. But it's just not a good time for me. Days later, Amber visits the workshop where she unexpectedly meets the racing driver again, and she sees her daughter very happy with her in the company of Cody, where he again invites her to go out to a cafe that night. Amber is eager to get on with her life. This time, she accepts the invitation. Wanna go check him out? Yes, I, I would like that. That night, in complicity with her friends Bridget and Hannah, they plan everything for the date. And after Amber goes out to see her lover, Patty unexpectedly arrives to visit Brie, who brings her ice cream and candy and meets Hannah, so Patty decides to babysit her granddaughter until Amber arrives. But while Brie was sleeping, Patty, curious to learn even more about her daughter-in-law's situation, checks Amber's mail and finds the lean notice sent by the bank. Concerned about her granddaughter, she waits for Amber to come home. When Amber arrives, Patty wastes no time and confronts her asking her questions about how much is owed on the mortgage, but preventing her mother-in-law from getting involved in her life, Amber doesn't answer any of his questions and asks him to leave his house immediately. Get out. Desperate to free up the mortgage on her house, Amber heads to a pawn shop as soon as it's dawn and asks for a loan of $800, leaving only her signature and credit card number as collateral. After they manage to get the money, things start to go wonderfully well for Amber, especially with Cody. Her love life is reborn again. However due to her grueling work schedule and now the time shared between Brie and her new love for Cody, Brie begins to feel the absence of her mother in her life and her behavior begins to change, 
so much so that Brie finds herself involved in an aggressive and violent fight with a classmate at school. Hello. Brie. <sighs> when her mother found out, and as expected, Amber scolds Brie for her attitude, not realizing that she is to blame for her daughter's change of attitude, who gets upset and to punish her for leaving her alone at home for so long, asks her to stay at her grandmother's house. Can I stay at grandma's house while you work? Amber of course doesn't agree, and she orders her daughter to spend the rest of the day at the cafeteria where she works. That night, while they are in the cafeteria, Amber receives a piece of news that makes her whole world collapse, it is a message from the bank manager saying that her deadline to repay the loan has expired and her house is going up for auction. <sighs> Amber, extremely worried about not being able to pay off part of the debt with the bank, decides to go back to the pawn shop to ask for another loan. But this time her owner asks for something more in exchange for her, so Amber has nothing left to do, and gives her her engagement ring. With the soul split in two, since for her that is a memory that her husband had given her before getting married, and giving it in exchange for a miserable amount of dollars is inconceivable. <laughs> the next night, a big argument breaks out at Amber's house, when Patty, on a surprise visit, realizes that her daughter-in-law is not wearing the engagement ring her son gave her before they got married, for which she very upset asks Amber why she doesn't have it on. You actually sold it. I had to. And when he confessed that he had to sell it, the discussion escalated as Patty, disappointed by Amber's inability to solve problems, reproached her because the ring was an heirloom from Bree's father's family. That terrible argument causes Amber's relationship with her daughter to deteriorate even more than it is, causing a great rift between them that is difficult to repair. One night Bree accompanies her mother to the cafeteria, and when she enters she sees a man in a wheelchair named Mike, she immediately recognizes him since he attends the same church where she attends. Bree strikes up a conversation with him and as they talk, she is surprised to see that the man is wearing an eagle badge on her jacket, realizing that it is the same one her father wore when he served in the army. The following days pass normally. One day Bree worries about her because her mustard seed is still not germinating, but she has the faith that she will do it at any moment. Upon waking up one morning, both mother and daughter notice a for sale sign in front of their house. Their mother clearly knows that it is the bank that has seized her and with a feeling powerless in the face of the situation, he takes the sign and hides it, not wanting to accept that he must sell his precious home. Desperate and scared, Amber drops Bree off at school and at full speed, she heads to the bank to hand over all the money she has at the moment to prevent the house from being auctioned hey, the off. Stop the foreclosure, please. I However, too hard the money this. is not enough and sadly the house is sold, leaving all the memories of it and moments of it lived in it. Amber and her daughter are forced to move into a new house with the money from the sale. At that time Bree, by order of her mother, is strictly prohibited from approaching Cody in order not to get involved in the races. Since Cody, the product of his impetuous and terrible decisions when driving, suffered a tragic accident during the race that complicated his return to the tracks, and to which Amber and Bree had been invited by Cody himself. Cody! However, Bree still has an interest in go-karts, so one morning she sneaks out of the house to practice in the go-kart that Cody had made for her. Amber, after looking for her daughter in the city, finally finds her, and to get her away from Cody she decides to take her home. But along the way, a terrible argument between mother and daughter begins once again, where Brie reproaches Amber for not letting her have fun as her father would allow her, and when she arrives she locks herself in her room. A few minutes later, Amber tries to talk to Brie again, but she realizes that her daughter had unimaginably escaped again. A citywide search is soon launched by the church group, including Cody, Joe, Mike and Patty to find Brie, until at night Sergeant Price finds her on a road driving a go-kart. How fast was I going? Back home, Brie decides to stay that night with her grandmother, which makes Amber even sadder and she falls into a deep depression. She begins to doubt all the work and effort that she has put in in recent years as a mother, 
and also in front of the church, with her faith on the verge of disappearing completely. She reproaches God and asks him why he allows all this to happen to him. At that moment, the group of friends from the church find her, comfort her and invite her into the church and once inside, Mike, the man in the wheelchair, asks the group to be alone with Amber to talk. Mike confesses to Amber that he was with her husband Darren the day he died in Afghanistan, and that he was alive because he saved him during an ambush, and that he would be forever grateful to Amber and their daughter for that, further telling her that neither he, nor God, would ever abandon them. Amber, calmer, regrets everything that had happened with her mother-in-law and her daughter, decides to visit Patty to talk to her so she can apologize. Upon arriving, Amber is shocked to see that Patty had recovered the ring that she had sold due to her debts. Then, with all the love in her heart, she apologizes to Bree for her fights, and the three of them go together to visit Darren's grave. They had finally found unity and peace between them. Thank you for leading me back to my family. At last the day of the church go-kart race arrives, and Bree, with her pink go-kart, came out the winner. Cody then invites Amber and Bree into a garage, where he shows them a new car for his next race, a car painted like Bree's go-kart and bearing the division insignia in honor of Darren that he rode with in Afghanistan. During the race Cody finally follows the advice that Joe was giving him, managing to avoid a crash in the same corner where he had had two accidents, having finally learned his lesson Cody wins the race and dedicates the prize to Amber and Bree. For Amber's part with her renewed faith in her, she returns to the church choir where she is cheered after singing with her melodious voice. The film ends with Bree's flower pot blossoming just as her family's faith in God did. This is the summary of a Christian movie called God Bless the Broken Road, click here and don't miss the following story.